This is for the thanks, praise, glory, honor, and power of Jesus Christ our God. Praise be to Jesus, praise be to Jesus, praise be to Jesus. This is Ammonia Zimmerman, and this is part two of our explanation of the combat system for Shadowrun 3, the pen and paper role-playing game. Now, for this video, I'm going to show you the combat system for melee weapons, which is weapons other than guns, such as swords, or knives, or mason chain, a baseball bat, anything other than a gun, or a ranged weapon. And uh, we're also going to show you the guns as well. We have two characters. The first is Jack Spike, who is in our first video. Jack Spike the Troll. Nine feet tall, huge, and scary. Our second character will be Slicer Dicer, a go-ganger, who has both a pistol and a katana blade. That's him right there. He's a human. <clears throat> so I did a lot of explaining in the first video. In this one, let's just get to it. So Jack Spike is walking down the street at night in Seattle. Yeah, he, he got a call from his fixer that there is a Johnson who has a job for him. And this Johnson's going to meet him at Club Penumbra. That's where he's headed on foot. And he's going to go see what this job entails. He heard that it's a smuggling job, but he wants the details and to get the deal made. So he's walking down the street, and he hears a yell of pain from around the corner. He keeps walking, confident, not worried. And then he hears a chuckle. Someone around the corner appears with a sword in his hand covered in blood. So Jack Spike keeps walking, and when he gets around the corner, he sees this same man over top of a dead body. And he says, that'll teach you for disrespecting me and my gang. He turns and looks at Jack Spike and says, ooh, fresh blood, fresh meat. Do you want to dance with the devil? Jack Spike says, me not want to dance with devil. Me want to crush skulls. And he lifts his mason chain up in a menacing fashion and shakes it. Combat ensues. Now, I want you to see something. Slicer and Dicer, Slicer Dicer, he has, for his initiative, it says 6 plus 1d6, but then it says here, it says plus 2d6. That's because he has cyberware implanted in him. In a shadow run, you can get cyber limbs, cy cyber eyes, cyber uh, implants it's basically like you have a robot part inside you and it, its benefit is it makes you stronger and faster and all types of different things in this case it makes him faster because of his cyberware he can roll 2d6 for initiative instead of 1d6 and he gets a 15 for his initiative roll I forgot to write this Initiative down. Let's also put the pools down. Let's put successes and the damage. Bam. All right, now. <clears throat> Jack Spike, he has combat pull 7, and he has 1 karma, slicer, <clears throat> he has combat pull of 8. And you see he has for karma, boom, two.
Anyway, Jack Spike's rolling his initiative, and it's 5 plus 1d6, so that makes it 7. See how uh, Slicer got a 15? That means that after both take their turns, 10 is subtracted from both numbers. And the person, whoever, whoever has any number left, goes again. And that's the second combat turn. Just to let you know. So anyway, Slicer goes first because he has a higher combat. I mean, a higher initiative. Now, Slicer pulls out his pistol, which is an Ares Predator holdout pistol, semi-automatic. If it's a semi-automatic -autom weapon, that means he can he can fire it twice in the same combat turn. So he has a skill level of three pistols. Three. He ro he gets three dice. Boom, boom, boom. And he's going to use half of his combat pool. Now he's only got four left. Now, I want you to notice this. When you're using uh, guns, you have a range. These are in meters. All right? The range determines the target number. The, far, the further away the target is, the higher the target number. Now, this is from 0 to 5 meters, which is the length of a room. And Jack Spike is in that range, so the target number is 4. But if it would have been more, it could have been five, six, or nine. But it's four. This is for his first shot. And he got one, two, three. He got three successes. Okay. Now Jack Spike can uh he can either try to resist the damage. Or he can try to dodge it and then resist it if it hits him. So, you, but the thing is, if he tries to dodge, he has to use his combat pull. He has to use up his. Well, he doesn't have to use all of it, but I mean, if he wants to dodge it, good. He'll probably have to use all of it, but he'll have to use his combat pull. That's what you use for dodging. And yes, he's gonna do that. He's got. He had seven combat pull, but he's gonna use it all. So we're gonna say he has zero now. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The target number is four. And he got a total of two successes. And what he's going to do is, he's going to use his karma pool, now he has zero, to re-roll those failures. That's five, he gets to re-roll. One, two, three... Four, five, and he got two additional successes from that, so that makes a total of four. Now, his dodge successes are more than his attacker's uh, successes in shooting, so he had completely dodged that bullet. However, I told you it's a semi-automatic. This weapon is a semi-automatic, S-A, semi-automatic, which means he gets to fire it twice in the same combat turn, but for the second shot, he gets a plus one modifier. And a modifier is a, is a number that either reduces or increases the target number. But in this case, it increases it. Increases his target number for attacking by one. So it would have been four, but now it's five. So he puts in his three dice, one, two, th three, and he goes to the target number five. He only got one success. Now, see, Jack Spike used up all of his combat pull. He can't dodge anymore. So the only thing he can do is use his body to resist the damage. So here we go. Praise be to Jesus, God is good. You see his body is nine. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now the target number to resist this shot is, you look up Aries Predator, it's nine moderate. Moderate is the wound level it'll inflict on him. Nine is the power of the weapon. Now if he was wearing armor, if he's wearing, if Jack Spike was wearing ballistic armor, by every point of ballistic armor he was wearing, it would lower that target number. But he's not wearing any armor. So he has to try to use the straight up base damage as the target number, which is 9. And he got two sixes. If you remember my first video, I told you if the target number is higher than 6, in this case being 9, you get to re-roll any sixes and add the numbers together. So that's a 12, and that is a 7. So he only got one success in resisting the damage. So he does get hurt. It's not enough. He takes a moderate wound, physical damage. Thing is, when you get wounded, when you get wounded, it's, you get an injury modifier. All of your rolls get a modifier on them to make them harder if you're damaged. Except for your damage resistance test. For a moderate wound, you get a plus two target modifier to all your rolls. So, that's not good for him. So now it's Jack Spike's turn. And he has a specialization in Mason Chain. He has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, melee combat is a little bit different than spells and ranged combat, because in melee combat, even if it is your turn, both people attack at the same time, because you're not, a person isn't just going to stand there while they're getting attacked, they're going to fight back, so in melee combat, even if it's not your turn, both people attack at the same time. So he, anyway... He's rolling his mason chain. The target, the base target number is four, but because he got a moderate wound already, it's six, which means he got no successes. And now, Slicer is going to use his katana, and he has a skill in that at five. One, two, three, four, five. And he decides to use the rest of his combat pool. One, two, three, four. And his target number is four. So you got one, two, three, four successes. So, what you do is, for every two net successes, the damage is staged up or staged down. In this case, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so he can stage the damage up twice. So it was a moderate wound, if you remember. Right? It's a moderate wound, but he can stage it up to twice, which brings it to... Boom... Boom. He stages the wound up to deadly. But, um... He still gets a chance to resist the damage with his body. Which we know is 9. I'll show it to you. Boom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the target number, again, is 9, to resist the damage. Now, he only rolled 1, 6. Let's see what happened. 
7. He got no successes in resisting that damage. So that means he took the full brunt of it. And he got a deadly wound with that sword. Slicer sliced him. And uh, he's already at a moderate wound. So he's taking... So what he, and he just took a deadly wound. So that's deadly plus 3. Now... That means five more boxes of damage and he's dead. Actually, no. Six more boxes of damage because he used the nine. But, uh, let's write it down. Deadly plus three physical. So, he's on. Jack Spike falls to the ground and he's bleeding to death and he's unconscious. Every combat turn, he's going to take another box of damage from blood loss. He already has plus three boxes. If if that damage, if he gets nine, if it goes over nine, he dies. So, six more boxes of damage and he dies from blood loss. Slicer and Dicer doesn't keep damaging him, though. He just sheaths his sword, doesn't even bother wiping the blood off, and he laughs triumphantly. He says, yeah, that's how it's supposed to go. And then he walks off and he chuckles. And then he starts whistling to himself as he walks down the street. God bless. God is good.